Okay, it's Jane from Earth Palette here and today I'm going to show you how I would deal with this skein of yarn. It's a bit bright and I just want to tone it down a bit. So um, I'm not going, I'm, I'm going to over dye it, but I'm going to over dye it all the same color. The violet's not really going to change much in this. I just, uh, you know, and that color's scarlet. It's like a red scarlet and um, I just want to tone it down a bit so it's more suitable for what I want to do with it. Okay, so I'm actually just going to use black dye. I think I might have too much liquid in my jug though. I'll just take a bit out. So this is just plain water. There's nothing else in it. It's just water. And what I'm going to do is just put a bit of dye into that. Now that I've used my container to put water in. Hang on. Okay, so I'm back and I thought I'd, I might just use a teaspoon. So I've got just plain water in my jug and this skein of yarn. This is a super wash yarn that's a merino nylon blend. Okay, so I'm actually just going to put about two teaspoons of black dye. This is the Earth Palette black dye into this water. Give it a bit of a stir up. So I don't want it to go a totally different colour. I just want it to cover the, the brightness really of this yarn. So, and then I'm just going to put it, I've got a spoon, it's just an ordinary wooden spoon I use for dyeing. And I'm going to put it in, whoa, without knocking the camera off, dip it up and down, slop it around a bit obviously, and turn it around my spoon. I would normally use a bucket for this. I thought I'd use a jug because I've only got one skein. And then proceed to dunk it up and down, rotate it over the spoon. You don't have to use a spoon. You could use a, um, a chopstick if you're only using one skein. Lift it up and down. I don't know if you can see, but gradually the color in that water is getting lighter and lighter as this yarn soaks it up all the dye. Now because we've diluted this dye down, it isn't going to set in there because the acid levels are not good enough. So when I'm happy with it, which I'm just going to take some of the water out, I'm going to lay it down and have a look at it, clean up my mess while I'm at it. But as you can see, most of the dye, most of the colour, the dye has actually come out of that container. Now my yarn is slightly less bright and I think I might just do a little bit more. I might just put two more teaspoons of dye in there. Just be careful when you're doing this you don't want to overpower your colours. I don't want it to go black. Mix it around again and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. Try not to slop it around too much. until I'm happy with it. By rotating it around the spoon and putting it up and down, you're separating all those strands of yarn when it gets into the bottom. I've found you could, this, is, this method is the one I use to do solid color dyes as well, but I usually do it in a bucket. I don't usually do it in a jug. So that black dye has gradually toned down how bright that red, scarlet colour is and it'll be far more or far less bright on your eyes. So when I'm happy with it I'll just give it a squeeze. I'm not too worried about felting it because I know it's a superwash yarn so they don't dribble everywhere. I'm going to add a slug. A slug's an official word I understand. So I'll probably put Perhaps I'll measure it. Okay. I'll only put about two capfuls. This is just plain white cheap vinegar, black and gold in this case from your supermarket. And I'll just add a bit in there. Smells a bit like pickles. And then I'm going to put my yarn back in the whole lot. Give it a poke with my spoon. And I'm going to let it sit there overnight. I do most of my dyeing in the afternoon and then rinse them out the next morning 
So I'll be back tomorrow morning to show you my pickled yarn. So um, the rest of the colour that's in there will soak into the yarn overnight and it needs the extra acid or vinegar to set those dyes because we've diluted it down so much you need to add a little bit more acid whether it's citric acid or vinegar to actually set those dyes they've been absorbed into the yarn but they're not set in the yarn unless the acid levels are correct okay so we're back with our yarn and um, as you can see the water is just about clear Give it a bit of a squeeze. Okay. So that yeah, that water is just about totally clear. Might be a faint tint of grey in it. And this is our yarn. It's much less bright on the eyes, and the violet hasn't really had a change at all. I will let this dry and um, show it to you when it's totally dry as well okay so here's our yarn all dry you can see the acrylic tie that i put on to handle it is actually not dyed at all which makes it easy to handle it's recommended you wear gloves when you're dyeing or you too can have hands like mine now as you can see putting that black in and over dyeing it a fraction has toned down that bright scarlet quite a lot without really doing anything to the violet colour on the ends. So it makes this yarn certainly more suitable for what I was planning to do with it and not quite so hitchy in the eye bright. And, um, but it's certainly not, not totally over dyed that colour. So I hope you'll have a go at over dyeing some of your yarns and um, feel free to like us and subscribe and we'll be back with another video.